heart I'm running for your heart Till I am a soul on fire Lord, I'm longing for your ways I'm waiting for the day When I am a soul on fire Till I am a soul on fire Lord, restore the joy I had
Good morning. Welcome to your worship as we gather again under God's grace. Uh, certainly a welcome to all of our members and also any guests that we have uh, with us today. Uh, just a reminder that uh, fill out the card that you have in front of you. Members, of course, the purple side, mark in your attendance with us today. And then also if you have any guests, uh, you find this card in front of you in the pew. If you'd also fill that out, share a little information with us. And also you're invited to come back to our welcome center where you can pick up some information. I'd like to have a chance uh, to meet you if you are visiting uh, here for today. A couple of things just to note. Uh, one is uh, we have another anniversary celebration coming up, our second one on April 30th. Uh, and you have this in your uh, bulletin today. And one explains a little bit about what's going on. Uh, one of those things that is going on that day is a meal that we're providing, a congregational meal. But do you know when you plan a meal, what you like to know is how many people are going to be there. Is that right? Well, they also need to know that themselves. So you see, this is your handy-dandy, easy way to make a reservation. Um, if you could do that today, that would be great. If not, as soon as possible. Just kind of check if you're able to you like plan on attending or not, and then the number, and also the opportunity to volunteer. You can just put it into the offering place that goes by. So if that could be possible today, that would be very helpful. Otherwise, as soon as uh, possible for that. Um, a couple more uh, food items. Uh, one, if you're in the 20s and 30s uh, group, uh, next Sunday is a bonfire and barbecue. Uh, so note that. And also today, you might have smelled something when you came in. Possibly Italian food is being prepared right now. It's a fundraiser for those that are going to Washington, D.C., the eighth graders. And so um, they're having uh, lunch, and you can pick up, uh, take out uh, here today right after our service. So that might be a possibility for your uh, lunch today. I have one more commercial, um, and that is uh, we have a there's a youth uh, a mission trip opportunity uh, coming up this summer, uh, July 9th through 15th. And we actually have right now two spots still open. Those are for current eighth graders through high schoolers. And I really like to encourage, I like to fill those spots up. The great thing is all the fundraising is already all done. And so it's a matter of just being part of that, uh, that, that mission trip. I have information outside that I can give to you a little overview where I can talk to you about it, but I would encourage people to really seriously think about that. I'd like to get two other people that are going. It's going to Grand Rapids, Michigan. So uh, please talk to me after the service if you think that would be something you could be interested in. Otherwise, on this second Sunday of Easter, we can continue to celebrate that Jesus has risen from the dead. So let's greet one another in the joy that we have in that message. song we could ever sing worthy of all the praise we could ever bring worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you We live for you, we 
beginning reminded of our baptisms in the name of God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. That victory remains ours by a God-given faith and hope that hope is kept alive as we daily repent of our sins and remain in the promises of God. For if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. 
Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are afraid of losing hope for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, risen from the dead for the life of the world. Have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Be seated. Light 
in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. 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 On the second Sunday of Easter, we hear from God's Word. Our first reading is from Acts chapter 5. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised Jesus, whom you killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things. And so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard this, they were enraged and wanted to kill them. But a Pharisee in the council named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, held in honor by all the people, stood up and gave orders to put the men outside for a little while. And he said to them, Men of Israel, take care what you are about to do with these men. For before these days, Thetis rose up, claiming to be somebody, and a number of men, about 400, joined him. He was killed. And all who followed him were dispersed and came to nothing. After him, Judas the Galilean rose up in the days of the census and drew away some of the people after him. He too perished, and all who followed him were scattered. So in the present case, I tell you, keep away from these men and let them alone. For if this plan or this undertaking is of man, it'll fail. But if it is of God, you will not be able to overthrow them. You might even... You might even be found opposing God. So they took his advice. And when they had called the, in, in the apostles, they beat them and charged them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. Then they left the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer dishonor for the name. And every day in the temple and from house to house, they did not cease teaching and preaching Jesus as the Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading today comes from 1 Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has called us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith, for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the testing, tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you have seen him, you love him. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. And our gospel today is taken from John chapter 20. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of anyone, they are forgiven. If you withhold forgiveness from anyone, it is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails and place my finger into the mark of the nails and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. 
Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. And the children can come forward for the children's message. Got there first. Very nice. Hello. <laughs> oh, I see that. Was that fun? Nice. <laughs> You're going to get it back. Get... <laughs> I did. I lost a lot of teeth. That's normally how things go. Uh huh. Yeah, it's a fun time. How are you guys all doing? Good. Good. Nice. So I have something. What does this look like? Yeah, a police badge. Exactly. You can't see it. Here we go. It's a picture of a police badge. So what's a police badge mean? What does that do? Yeah. It holds on to polices. Yeah, it does. It sticks right there on their chest and holds on to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it represents that they're part of the uniform. Is that what you said? Yeah. So it's who, who wears it is the one who is in that uniform. And the uniform says this guy has a particular job to do. So like the sheriff, you know, he has his badge. But the sheriff's not alone, right? The sheriff has his deputies. So the sheriff comes and says, I deputize you. And he gives them a badge too, which means that they have the same job that the sheriff does. They have the same authority to do the same things that the sheriff does. They have the permission to do what the sheriff does. So do we hear anything like that in our service? Yeah, there's policemen at the school to keep you safe. That's good. Do we see any kind of authority, any kind of uniform in the church service? It's at the very beginning when pastor stands and says, I forgive you your sins in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ. That's like when we heard in our gospel lesson today, if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. That's Jesus handing out deputy badges to his church and saying, here, you have the same power that I do. If you forgive someone's sins, I forgive their sins. So he has the same authority. It's like a little badge. That's why he says called. That's why he has the same, you know, as a servant of Jesus. All right, let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for forgiving our sins and for giving us a place where each of us can hear that as our own special gift. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, thanks, guys. You can go back to your seats.
and I will sing of the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire in darkest night. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. In the goodness of God All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able And I will of the goodness of God. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. After you with his goodness? A dead man. But Christ is risen. He is Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is risen indeed. And it seems to me, I don't know if it seems this way to you, but it's been a while since we've gathered. After Holy Week, when we slow down and have Thursday and Friday, and Saturday and Sunday, all together as God's people. And then we celebrate Easter. And we have that great joy. And then the, the next week, we're not gathered together the same way. It seems like it's been a while since we've come together. But that doesn't mean that Easter's past. Because every Sunday is a little Easter gathering. Every Sunday we celebrate the resurrection. And that's why we come together today and we have our lesson from John 20. And when does it start? It starts on Easter Sunday. We just haven't gone anywhere. We've gone a couple hours into the evening. Because our text starts with them, the disciples huddled together in the upper room with the door locked for fear of the Jews. 
And it makes sense that they would be fearful, of course. You know, Jesus has just been killed. Their leader has just been killed. The guy that they follow. And what did the Jews promise for that? Well, of course, you know, they're probably going to try to kill his outer circle too, or inner circle. We heard that in our reading from uh, Acts, I believe it was, where they said they were trying to kill them. And even if they're not trying to be killed, like they tried to kill Lazarus, they're going to be put out of the synagogue, like our blind man's parents were afraid of a couple weeks ago. They'll be put out of their whole life. These men have given up everything to follow Jesus, and now he's gone. What's the future hold? What's that look like? Where are they going to go when everything seems to be against them or apart from them? It's reasonable that they might be scared. But Jesus doesn't leave them like that, of course. Jesus is risen. So he comes and miraculously stands in their midst. He just shows up in this locked room. And that's, that's kind of startling. So he says, peace be with you. But even that is more than we might expect because we would normally expect, like when an angel shows up, what's the angel usually first say to the people? It says, fear not. Don't be afraid. But Jesus gives it one better and says, peace be with you. And then he keeps going and he does something kind of weird. I want you to picture... You're sitting in a room somewhere and somebody walks in and goes, blows in your face. Jesus doesn't ever act the way we would want him to act or expect him to act. But this is an amazing thing because he's breathing life into them. He breathes on them and says, receive the Holy Spirit. So we want to think about creation. When God formed man out of the dust of the earth, But he wasn't done then. He breathes life into them. And we've heard a couple times in the last few weeks the story of Ezekiel's vision of the valley of dry bones. And what happens then? The bones crinkle up together and they get their tendons on them and their flesh. But it's not done. God breathes life. It's the breath of life that Jesus is giving here. And that breath of life is connected to forgiveness, forgiveness of the crucified Christ who comes and says, here are my wounds which were received for you to forgive you all of your sins. That's to bringing you new life. And that life goes forward then as we talked about in the children's message. He sends them out to keep giving that forgiveness, to keep giving that new life out. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold it from any, they are withheld. We love that forgiveness, that we can have a place where we can go to receive forgiveness. We get a little uncomfortable with the other side of that, the the binding key as it's called, that if you withhold forgiveness from any that is withheld, but we probably should be uncomfortable with that. We don't want to hear that. Jesus doesn't want you to hear that. And I pray that none of us would ever have to hear that, that we would all live lives of godly repentance and not love our sins more than Jesus' forgiveness of sins. Because that's what Jesus wants for you is forgiveness and life and peace. That's what he always wants to give you. If I step back from that, that'll help a little bit. But he wants to give you forgiveness and peace. And that's what he wanted for his disciples, for all of us. Now, of course, if we talk about all of us, Thomas wasn't there that day for whatever reason. We don't know why. Maybe he was out getting groceries or something, but he was gone. And he has the word of the disciples. Because obviously that's the talk of the day. You know, that's the talk of the week. We have seen the Lord, they say to him. But he doesn't believe it. So he gets that moniker that we've given him through all these years, Doubting Thomas. Because... He doubts. He doesn't believe the word. Unless I touch it, unless I feel it, I'm not going to believe. And that goes on. We're hard on Thomas for that. You know, we don't give him the name Thomas, the one who said, let's go die with him. Give him the name Doubting Thomas. But doubt, that's part of all of us. That's, That's the first commandment. You shall have no other gods before me. 
And anytime we doubt God, it's the breaking of the first commandment. And we all do that. The unbelieving world, of course, does that. They doubt that Jesus rose from the dead. They doubt that Jesus is God. They doubt that the scriptures are the word of God. But we do the same thing. When God says that whatever happens to you, if, if various trials must come upon you, or that this is good for you, we doubt that. When horrible things happen to us, horrible things, we say, God, is that really what I needed? Was that really the best thing for me? Was that really your plan? How is this helping me? I would have done it a different way. I doubt this is the best way. It's easy for us to doubt a simple word that the pastor says, that I forgive you your sins is the forgiveness of sins. It's easy to hear God's words as hyperbolic when we read about, hear about the new creation and eternal life of praising God. And we think, I mean, I like singing a song every now and then, but eternally praising God, that, that just seems a little boring, Jesus. We doubt comes to all of us, just like it came to Thomas. But Jesus doesn't leave us in our doubts. Jesus comes to forgive us of our doubts, to forgive us of our sins, and to give us new life and peace. And so he comes eight days later, which is like today, the week after Easter, just like today is. And he shows up in his miraculous God way of showing up, and he does a miraculous God thing of knowing Thomas's doubts. He doesn't wait for Thomas to say, well, here's Jesus, here's my list of grievances and what I need to believe. He goes to Thomas and says, here are my hands. Here is my side. Put your finger here. Put your hand here. He recites Thomas's grievances back to him. And Thomas, Thomas has this great reaction. My Lord and my God. He hears the word, he sees Jesus, and he knows, he believes. And it's not just that he's saying, Jesus, that's awesome that you're here. I got you now. I believe that you're Jesus. He's saying, Jesus, my Lord, my God, is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The God who created everything. The God who has chased the nation of Israel all through history to forgive sins and to redeem people. The God who was crucified is how we know the God of everything. It's the crucified Jesus who we read about in our Old Testaments. When you see that all caps Lord, you pray the Psalms and you hear that all caps Lord, you can pretty well almost always put Jesus Christ in there. And that's who you're talking about. Every once in a while, it's kind of shaded more towards the Father, but that's just how the Trinity works. It's kind of, you know kind of gets at us. But Jesus is the one who comes to forgive us our sins, always. And there's also a good comfort in this that Thomas doesn't believe right away. You know, Thomas, it takes a week, a week of waiting, a week of hearing the other disciples say that you've seen the Lord. Because sometimes it takes time and it takes the word of God working on people. Because we all have people that we love and people that we care for, our friends, our neighbors, brothers, sisters, daughters, parents, who we would love it if they would respond with us in joy when we hear that Christ is risen. But they don't respond that way. We would love it if they did. But we can take comfort from this that these things aren't about us and our how much we say and how we say the right words, but God's word works in God's time. And so we can trust that God's word will do what God's word will do, even if it doesn't fit with our timelines and our cares. Because it's the word of God that converts and the word of God that makes alive. We don't have to see We don't have to know. We have the word of those who saw. And there's a special blessing for us there too because this part ends, Jesus ends this with, blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. And that's us. That's you and me because we, Jesus hasn't popped into our midst in the same way and said, here are my wounds. He comes to us in a different way. We have not seen and yet we believe. So that's us who 
our epistle lesson talks about in verse 3, or verse 8, I'm sorry, that though you have not seen him, you love him. We are those who have assurance of being born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. We are born again as children of God, united with the Holy Spirit who has breathed life into us. And as children of God, we have an inheritance. And that inheritance is peace. The peace that Jesus comes to give you. The peace of new life. And that's not a peace that you might necessarily feel. That's not the peace of kicking back on the beach with your cell phone off in another room with the Lutheran beverage by your side. That's, a, that's not a peace that you feel. It's like we sang a minute ago, even when you don't, I don't feel it, you're working. Because that peace is opposed to war. That peace is the peace that says, God is not against you. God is for you. God is with you. God loves you and God cares for you. That's a peace that is perfect and passes all understanding. So even if you don't feel it, even if you're stressed and anxious and things tear at you and you've got things that you just can't get rid of and you say, there's no peace in me, there is peace for you. An eternal peace. A peace that looks to the end. The peace that brings the apostles to boldness so that I want you to see at the, when Thomas comes back, yeah, they're in the room, they're locked, the door is locked. But what does it not say? For fear of the Jews. It's changed. And I might pass over that. Just, you know, it's a turn of phrase. It's, it means the whole thing, but just using a little bit of it. Except for our reading from Acts. What are these men who are holed up for fear of the Jews doing? They're out there preaching repent, the resurrection of Jesus to the Jews, to the very people who are seeking to kill them. They're sitting there in a meeting talking about how to kill them and the disciples are preaching the resurrection to them. They're bold, they're strong, they're caring because they look to the end and they know that no matter what happens here, there is peace. They have the peace of God. They're not at war. They have peace. And that's the same peace that Jesus comes to bring you constantly, week after week. Because Easter didn't end on Easter Sunday. Jesus came on Easter, and he came the week after to Thomas, and he came the week after, and he comes, and he comes, and he comes to you today. He comes to you in his word, and he comes to you in his sacraments. He comes to you to give you peace, and I need your help on this, and I missed this in the first service, and, but, so you have to remember this for next week, which you should remember the sermon for next week anyway. But you should remember this for next week and help tell the people at early service because I missed this. But when pastor does the words of institution, when he finishes them, he says, the peace of the Lord be with you always. That's true. Now, technically, the liturgical answer there is amen. It's fine because we want pastor to have peace too. But he goes, the peace of the Lord be with you. And this motion from the the crucified Christ to you, the peace of the Lord to you. It's Jesus coming and saying, the peace of the Lord be with you. Jesus comes and gives you peace when the absolution is spoken. So whatever happens to you, whatever assails you or bothers you or troubles you, whatever sins you're struggling with and you can't get over, whatever circumstances are coming against you that just don't feel right, Christ is more than that. Christ has overcome that and given you peace and he brings you peace. So anything that comes against it, anything that comes against you, any troubles you have, you can weigh that against this. That Christ is risen. Christ is risen and he gives you peace. In Jesus' name, amen. And let us confess this in the words of, I believe, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come.
You may be seated. We continue our worship as we gather our offering. this morning we also include the prayers for the families of loved ones whom our Lord Jesus has welcomed home. Just one week ago this afternoon on Easter Sunday afternoon Wilbur Welber fell asleep in the arms of Jesus. The service of praise and glory to God in his memory was yesterday morning here at suburban Bethlehem and we also pray for the family of Christian Rogers the service of praise and glory to God will be at 6 p.m. this evening with visitation beginning at 2 o'clock here at Suburban Bethlehem as we give thanks and praise, celebrating 
the life of Christ lived in Christian's life as well. I invite you to keep that family in your prayers as well. I invite you to rise as we join together in prayer. O oh God, in the glorious joy of our continuing celebration of the resurrection of your Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ from the dead, we give you thanks and sing your praise. By his death, he has destroyed death. And by his rising now gives to all who believe the gift of eternal life in the forgiveness of our sins. Help us to walk with the certainty of a living hope of the eternal life of the world to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give boldness to your whole church throughout the world that your servants, especially your pastors and teachers, proclaim the resurrection of Christ to all people as the objects of your love. So continue, Lord, to bless Jennifer Anderson, our preschool teacher for three- and four-year-olds, and continue, Lord, to bless her and her ministry. Be with also Pastor Steve and Cindy Schumacher, sharing your word of love around the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, save and defend our country. Give wisdom and compassion to all in authority that they may serve all people with justice and provide for the maintenance of peace. So be with those who serve you through the public good. Be with those in the Fort Wayne Fire Department, including Brian Kidd, and those on the Arcola Fire Department, Michael Fairfield, Russ Harmeyer, and Charlie Reed. Lord, in your mercy. Lovingly embrace all who gather to celebrate the remembrance of the most glorious death and resurrection of your Son. Increase faith and hope in the hearts and minds of all who call upon you, especially all who are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or adversity. By your healing grace, defend us from every evil to body and soul. And so, Lord, we pray that you continue to bless little Henley Day, especially as soon the water and word of baptism are brought upon her. We praise you with Susan Eastus, Jody Furness, and Emily Needing for continued recovery. Be with Logan Cornman, that, Lord, there would be a correct diagnosis and a tre treatment plan forward. Continue to be with Matthew Gullias and Charlotte Miller and Joe Schlosser, and also those with cancer, including Dan Esterline, Sue Esterline, Anna Jank, Jim Streit, and Arden Booker. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We also pray, Lord, your grace and love upon every member of this congregation. We pray particularly today for Noe and Michael Unsumbath and family, Mark and Don Barnholt, Jason and Heather Bennett and family, Steve and Mary Cruzy, Frank and Marissa Moffat and family, Nancy Pearl and Mike and Deb Reinking. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. we command to your mercy, O Lord, all your servants who have departed with the sign of faith and now rest in the sleep of peace. Grant to them your mercy and everlasting peace. And on the day of the resurrection of all flesh, grant that we and all your servants of the mystical body of your Son may all together be set on his right hand and hear his most joyful voice saying, Come, you blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. So, Lord, continue to hold close to you the family of Christian Rogers, the family of Wilbur Weber, the family of John Weichel, brother of Bev Weimer, and the family of Daniel Dunn, father of Pat Dunn. And also, Lord, we remember with Rob and Deb Myers, their little son, Jacob. Continue, Lord, to hold these dear ones close to you, bringing the sweet, powerful message of your cross and your resurrection victory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Restore. 